So to understand conduction in semiconductors, you need to understand that electrons in individual atoms can take discrete energy levels within that atom. Now, if you've got a material with lots of electrons, there are many, many more discrete energy levels that these electrons can take. In fact, these energy, there's so many of them that these energy levels can form bands of energy levels. Two of the bands that you need to know about are the valence band and the conduction band. So electrons that are in the valence band of energy levels then are bound to individual atoms. They cannot take part in conduction because they are bound to individual atoms. They can't flow through the structure, so they can't take part in conduction. However, electrons in the conduction band are free to move throughout the entire structure. They are delocalized. They can take part in conduction because they can move through the entire structure. Now, let's look at the band structure of an insulator to start with. Now, in an insulator, you've got the valence band, and then you've got the conduction band, and they are separated by a large band gap. The valence band at the bottom, the conduction band at the top. Now, because of this large band gap, it's quite difficult. You need a lot of energy to take electrons from this valence band into the conduction band. And because it's quite difficult to do that, you have no electrons up here in the conduction band able to conduct. So it's an insulator. Now in an insulator, the two bands overlap. Now because of this, it doesn't take much to get these electrons up into this conduction band and free to move through the entire structure. So there are a lot of electrons in the conduction band in a conductor, able to take part in conduction, and therefore it's a conductor. Now in a semiconductor, this band gap is still there, very, very small compared to an insulator, which means that even just the ambient room temperature will give these electrons enough energy to jump from the valence band into the conduction band. So there are actually already some electrons in that conduction band able to take part in conduction, albeit less than there is in a, in a conductor, uh, but a lot more than there is in an insulator. Now, if you were to take, say, a thermistor, a thermistor is a, a semiconductor device uh, where if you increase the temperature of it, then you are giving the electrons in the valence band enough energy to jump up into the conduction band across this very small uh, band gap, which means you can increase the number of available charge carriers just by increasing the temperature of the thermistor. LDRs, light-dependent resistors, work in a very similar way. Uh, instead, with, instead of heat, you have light that will give these, these electrons enough energy to make the jump up to the conduction band and take part in conduction. So to summarize then, in an insulator, you've got a very large band gap. The electrons need a lot of energy to get from the valence band into the conduction band. And because of that, they insulate. They have no available charge carriers to take part in conduction. In a conductor, they are much closer together. The bands are overlapping, so a lot of these valence electrons are also in the conduction band and able to take part in conduction. In a semiconductor, similar idea as the, con as, as the insulator, except the band gap is much smaller. So you don't need as much energy to take electrons from the valence band into the conduction band. In fact, just ambient room temperature is enough to take a lot of them up there. Uh, so you can have a little bit of conduction without increasing the temperature too much. So another concept to get your head around then is the idea of conduction holes. So when an electron leaves the valence band for the conduction band, it will leave behind a positively charged ion. Now this positively charged ion is going to have a hole, a positively charged hole, where the electron was. Now a neighbouring atom might donate uh, an electron to fill that hole, leaving it with a hole. And then the neighbouring atom to that will donate an electron, uh, leaving it with a hole. Now these holes, these positively charged holes, are going to move towards the negative end of the circuit, the cathode, uh, which will essentially mean that the holes are behaving like another charge carrier, uh, moving in the opposite direction to the electrons. So you've got the positively charged holes moving one way, and the negatively charged electrons moving the other way. So you've got two charge carriers in semiconductors, you've got holes and you've got electrons. 